How's it going, everyone? This is Dr. Hefe playing some more Disco Elysium. And last time, we tried to get into a crate so we could sell Cindy the Skull's art, but we managed to fail. What are you gonna do? Savvy can't always be helping you out. And yeah, we were supposed to call the Jamrock Library, but then we got distracted by talking to the two skulls, but we got their jacket. Look at us. Look at us. We are a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Oh yeah, and we lifted a barbell. Quite badass. Quite badass. Hey, officer, got a minute? No, so you're always Inside, just talking about random garbage. Steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out. Right, this is precinct 57, 57. In the cabin. This is precinct 57. I'm afraid that load. We should try again. Anything else? This is 57. In the cabin. All right, all right, all right, all right. They're closed. I should remember. It's got to be at 10 a.m. So let's uh, head over to stock the traps. This is probably closer, the church. Let's run on over there. Try and accomplish some missions. See a nice little yellow thing here. There's a slit in the concrete here, a sewer. The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. Think we might find Ruby down there? Oh yeah, we're supposed to be looking for Ruby. We think she was involved in the murder of the hanged man. We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. That sounds quite horrible. A working sewage system is... Oh, one of the blessings of modern times. Although, the Romans did have it, so... I guess it's not that modern. In conclusion, she could be under any building. But not in there? I hope not. Alright. Let's use our thinking. Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. Good one, Visual Calculus. We hadn't just talked to Kim about that. Alright, we out of here. Freaking little random dots just showing up. We ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Let's just zoom out big time. We have that thought that allows us to zoom way out. Why not? So this was the one that we need the to trip restock. Empty near the reeds. The locusts, dazed from being transported, slowly begin to acclimate to their new surroundings. They're not really going to get the chance to get comfortable here. Good. Now that's done. When do you think we will return to our impending apocalypse of a murder investigation? Do you agree, Kim? The apocalypse is nigh. Don't answer that. It was a rhetorical question. He doesn't want to, but if there is one more cryptozoological runaround, he must force the investigation back on track. This better be it. All right. We have done it. Do we report back? We report back to the whirling. Okay. Map? Can we quick travel? Nope. We gotta, we gotta take a quick little walk back to the church. But then we will be back to see our good friend Lena. So I keep trying to call her Lena, but I believe that's not actually... It's not yours. You didn't crash every MC in Ravishal. Hey, it's all good. I'm fine. I'm fine. Called her what? Lena? Lena. That guy's also got a great accent. Our good friend, the cryptozoologist. Not the crypto-fascist. We don't care for that guy at all. Oh, the smoking man. What a wonderful person to talk to. How's it going? Hello, dear. It's good to see a familiar face. I restocked the empty trap. Where's Morel? Thank you for doing that, dear. Morel still isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. Only the hardcore players left, huh? Well, we'll be, we'll be middling, you know? It's probably for the best. It's awfully cold out there in those reeds. I'm sorry, dear. You've had to drudge through them so many times. Such is field work. A young person's game, as they say. I mean, it's gotten a lot better now that they added that quick travel in the final cut. My goodness, running back and forth was not as fun as it may seem. So, who's going to check the traps? Morel will eventually, or we'll talk Gary into going back out, perhaps. 
The lieutenant stares at his shoe, caked in mud. He doesn't say anything. Oh no. Oh no. Kitsuragi's gonna be so pissed. Take it up. Take it on with undue optimism. Kim, don't worry. I won't be too optimistic, so don't freak out. We'll take care of it. That really is too much, sweetie. Thank you for your dedication, but I can see you're coming down with a cough yourself. That's just the uh, cigarettes, ma'am. I've taken up smoking again. Fuck that cough. It's not happening. The insides of your lungs are lined with Endurance. tobacco, a powerful antibacterial agent. You are unstoppable. That is not true at all, Endurance. That is not true at all. Kids, don't, don't smoke. It's bad for you. Very strange. Why is she not letting me do this? It's like she's given up. Yeah. Lena, what's wrong? You seem different. Different? How? Yeah. You, you've you given up on the phasmid? I'm in doubt, sweetie. That's all. Everyone is now and then. Yo, you're talking to freaking Harrier Dubois, the man who forgot what his name was, what his purpose was. What his reason for living was? I understand, man. I understand completely. Everyone is now and then. It's a... A strange feeling. I haven't really told this to anyone, but... You are a police officer. That's right. You can tell by the jacket I'm wearing. And when a police officer asks, you must answer. Do you ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is just that? A story? Or a dream? Seeing the Insulindian Phasmid was just a story I used to tell people. I didn't really think about whether it was real or not. Hmm. But Morel told me you've seen it. You also told me. Morel's so proud of it. He always tells everyone. So you haven't seen it? I should arrest you for lying. Oh my goodness. You seem to really believe it happened. Doesn't that count for something? Yo, we believe in a lot of things. And that counts for a lot in the world of Harrier Dubois Apocalypse Cop. No, sweetie. There's more to it than that. Morel was so eager to believe my story was evidence of the Phasmid's existence that I'm some queen of the cryptozoologists. That, and for years his belief made me believe too. That I am a queen, an extraordinary witness to grace. Mm. I mean, doesn't everybody want to be somebody's queen or somebody's king? There's nothing wrong with that, Lana. But now we're both getting old and he's still working himself sick out in those reeds looking for it. But what if I was just wrong? I think I was. Hmm. That's true. You don't want someone to kill themselves over you. I understand that. You got a lot of empathy for your husband. The lieutenant opens his notebook, but doesn't write anything. He's hiding. These things are tough on him. Matters of love, not violence or deceit. All right, we'll try this suggestion. But it has, hasn't it? Oh my seed goodness! Can only bear what's inside. No suggestion. The seed of love is Why are black you so bad? and oily. It has a taste you're quite familiar with. Lying has gotten you this far. Why stop now? Might be right, detective. I was a paraplegic before we met. He didn't know before I came in on our first date. If I weren't the queen of the cryptozoologists. I didn't tell him that story. She has to swallow to relax her throat. It's keeping her from talking. Wow, love is hard. Yo, yo. I mean, I don't know if we know anything about love. Harry seems to have some real issues around it, so... Um... You know what? We're just gonna say nothing. We're, we're gonna play it cool. I wasted enough of your time with this drama. I really must go before I start crying and waste more of it. No, it's all good. What you have to know is, the Insulindian Phasmid probably does not exist. 
let us fools chase our ghosts. There are a million better things to do with your life. Yo, to hell with this. I still believe you saw the Phasmid. I don't think that's going to be comforting. This could be okay, though. Thing is, you're not sure you made it up either. Let's just show, let's just sow a little doubt. I'm not sure of anything. Sometimes I still see it, you know. The real memory. Not the memory of the memory, but it's so hard to tell the two apart. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel is running a fever and I need to get him home to Jamrock before we overstay our welcome with Gary. Are you sure you don't need any help? You've been quite nice to me. You called me your sweetie, although you didn't give me any money. Oh no, thank you, but I can get there on my own. This old thing is gas-powered. And then a taxi home. It's not so bad. Gas-powered? That sounds dangerous, but... Alright. You do that. I'll check the traps one more time. Really? Oh, sweetie. Please don't get stuck on a dream. Take it from me and Morel. Don't worry, Kim. We're going back out there. No one can stop you from finding the pheasant. Yeah, no one's gonna stop me. Can I have your address, just in case there's news? Okay. It's 1113 Tabernacle Road. Jamrock, but... Well, it's been a pleasure, ma'am. No, no, no. We'll be personal. Be careful out there, Lena. You too, sweetie. Thank you for everything, truly. Even though it turned out to be a... A fool's hope. Like that, she drives off. The guest enters quietly as she gets to the doors, then pushes them open. Outside, it's snowing. We should go to... Somewhere out there, a kilometer to the southeast, a gust of wind shakes the felled building, rattling dusty windows beckoning with strange coldness to ask the wind once more oh shivers you wonderful wonderful person i'm just gonna talk to this drunk guy again the man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod acknowledging your presence yo you know what's behind that door there it's pinball machine he looks up at you then looks away quickly Shrugging. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. Alright, I don't think I need anything else. Stay masculine, bro. That was, that was a simple conversation we just had right there. Alright, well, we found the Insulindian Phasmid, or not. It's kind of like a bummer end to our hunt for the Revisholian Bigfoot, but... Well, that's how it goes sometimes. You know, we investigated the doomed commercial area, and what was it? Just some dice maker up in her tower. We investigated a murder, and what was it? It wasn't even a real hanging. It was some dude who got shot in the mouth while he was having sex with Klausia. We investigated... The, what, do, what do we do for... Oh, we investigated the drug ring, which we did find was true and had Ruby in it. So maybe not everything is false. I mean, we looked into Kuno's dad, who did have some drugs, but he was not a badass dude. He was a dude who's on his last legs. Even Kim Kitsuragi, who is sometimes hopeful, thought he was, he was done for. So... Yeah, hard times, hard times all around. Well, let's try and get our rhetoric on. We'll take off our F the world jacket. Oh my God, we look so uncool. Let's put this on to cover that up. Cover that right on up, right on up. We'll get our smokes on. Yeah, we're real cool, man, real cool. We'll be able to pump up our rhetoric, level that up. You know what? We're gonna get in. We're gonna do a little quick save. We're gonna make sure we get in this time. You're back before the cargo container. Let's persuade its the door to open. Since you were lost here, and as it's all. Oh, did we fail? Oh man, a time warp just occurred. 
What was that? So strange. Why do we get this random loading screen out of nowhere? Anyway, You're let's go back, back and try opening container. this door here. Yes. Step aside, rank and file. Savvy's at the top of the VIP list here. That's right. Out of the way. Out of the way, everyone. We're busting in. Whoa. Watch it. <laughs> How did he get in front? Little slime. Oh, boy. the other voices are upset. Savvy's busting in. Yeah, get out of here, Rhetoric. You don't know anything. Savvy's here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, are you ready? It's time to make our entrance. Oh my god, this is beautiful. Ahem. <clears throat> hey, it's Savvy here. Savvy with two Vs. I'm on the list. The guest list. At first, your knock rings hollow on the door. And then, just like that, you hear a click, then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. Ahoy! Come on in! What the ever-loving pure holodon trip are we seeing right here? Mega rich, light bending guy. This guy's loving life. You can't be serious. Kim, you thought this was just a cargo container? This is a freaking insulindian phasmid right here, baby. We're about to be rich. We're about to be so rich, we're gonna be able to buy our own little pure holodon light from the dude in the pawn shop. My goodness, the pure holodon is strong with this one. The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. What is it's happening? It's hard to say anything more about him. You cannot make out any of his details, but you do feel the overwhelming presence of capital. Our money is freaking out. It is freaking out. What happened to our money? If this is our money, though, I'm, I'm cool with it. The feeling causes all the hairs on your body to stand at attention, like soldiers preparing for review. Dude, we aren't covering our eyes. Look at what's happening to us. Kim, have we entered the black, the singularity of money? Something's amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended, distorted, an echo. Trying to visualize the physics at play is liable to give you an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard. No, we, we shall not think about it too hard. Fair enough, fat visual calculus. We will not. In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter. Wow. Welcome. Savvy, was it? Make yourself at home. Sorry, I'm not better able to receive you. I wasn't expecting visitors today. I mean, do you normally get visitors in your cargo container? You can't hear him exactly. Yet, you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange. An overwhelming hum covers everything. Voice doesn't escape from him. Now, what can I do for you, gentlemen? You can see how his body appears composed in a sharp summer suit and yacht shoes. Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> oh... I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Wow, is this guy that much of a celebrity that people don't ask who he is? Anyhow, my name is Rustam Diodore, investor, license holder, and extremely high net worth individual. And your name is Savi, right? Uh, correct. Correct. We've hit the big time. This is the man who's going to make you rich. Always rely on your friendly neighborhood swindler. Mr. Diodor, I think there's been some confusion. His name is, in fact, not Sevi. Let's start over. I am Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi of the RCM, and this is my partner. I wish I could go with Savvy. 
We've given up on Raphael Ambrosius Gusto. We're Harrier Dubois now. Pleasure to meet you, Harrier Dubois. I must admit, the name suits you very well. How did you become so rich? Oh lord, not this again. What's the matter, Campbell? Oh, nothing. It's just that we've got this murder to solve, and yet you go around asking everyone about money. And every time I ask, are you sure this is related to the case, you say, sure, Kim, I think it is. And yet, it never seems to get us any closer to solving the case. Kim, imagine what we could do with so much money, though. We could stop trying to solve this freaking case and retire. Retire to the beautiful, beautiful hills of... I forget what the rich part of town is. But we'll get out of Jamrock, that's for sure. <laughs> it's quite alright. I'm used to the question by now. To be blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself was an extremely high net worth individual back in Graz. That sounds like the best way to make money. Inherit it from your grandmother. All I did was take her fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailing boats, bad choices, and unsupervised state policy. And blow. And blow. Do not blow your fortune on blow. What's it like being an extremely high net worth individual? I gotta tell you, at first, being rich is a lot of work. You've got to work hard because everything's so darn expensive. You know, prices increase exponentially at this income level. But then, once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out ahead no matter what. I mean, if you control everything, something's always going up. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, but doesn't that take all the fun out of it? And I tell them, not really. Dude, Savvy would be so cool with it. You're right, capital accumulation is its own reward. Precisely, Mr. Dubois. Quink. You know, I hear people talk sometimes about economic equality and fairness, but tell me, where would we be without liberalism? In caves, walking each other with bones. Capital accumulation is its own reward. Oh, that's a weird take. All right, yeah, that would suck, whacking each other with bones. Much better to whack each other with guns. Speaking of which, I lost mine. A nightmare scenario. A world of slavery and violence. Which brings us back to the essential truth of modernism, where we are right now, the freedom of mankind can only be derived from the free flow of capital. Okay, cool, cool. Man, being a high net worth individual sounds great. It is truly. It's almost entirely carefree. It really leaves you time to better yourself spiritually. Is that how you ascended to become freaking impossible to see? You bend light because you have ascended? Hey, hey. All this talk about money has made you lose the thread. What is going on with the light in this place? That's what you need to ask him about. Yeah, there is something strange about you. What do you mean? Well, I don't know how to put it. You look uh, a little different. Are you talking about my chin? No, I can't even see you. It's as if something's happening to the light. Oh, that's what you mean. Yes, I've heard of this effect. Though I've never witnessed it myself, of course. It has something to do with our vice Wiesemann coefficient. The what? The weiss Wiesemann oh, coefficient is a notes. ratio designed to reflect the difference in net worth between individuals. When the coefficient is close to 1, or 100%, it means one person possesses all the net worth among that group of individuals. It's been observed that when the weiss Wiesemann coefficient reaches about 0.96 or so, the laws of physics begin to bend around the high net worth individual. My goodness. I bet Bezos would so wish that that was true. He could freaking fly into outer space without a rocket ship. He'd just be all like, yo, gravity is off for high net worth individuals like myself. 
What is our coefficient, Encyclopedia? The wise Weisman coefficient for you and this individual appears to be 0.9998, repeating. That man's really rich. That's not good for you. Are you telling me that you're so rich that light literally bends around your face? I won't get her tinks, but calm down. I am but a lowly single digit billionaire. Wow. Only a single digit billionaire? Bro, we got triple digit billionaires over here. No, not really. <laughs> there are actually quite many digits. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> oh, that was a good joke. That was a billionaire joke, man. <laughs> <laughs> Only a single digit billionaire? Oh my god. That's like so freaking poor. <laughs> oh man. Good one. Good one, bro. A man this chill is at least a triple digit billionaire. Cam, are you seeing this weird stuff? I see nothing of the sort. To be frank, all I see is a gentleman who is unusually well dressed for Martinez in a cargo container, which I admit is odd. Kim. Is Kim secretly a billionaire? That would explain why he doesn't care about money. He's a freaking billionaire. That's amazing. Yes. I imagine that does look strange to you. My container. Right. So what are you doing in this container? Traveling. This is a great way to get around. It's fun. It's safe. And it gives me lots of time to think. By the way, let me now ask you a question. Where are we exactly? I suppose we are in... There's a creepy abandoned commercial area here. A good hostel. There's a cool church here. Yo, let's talk up the anodic dancing. In Martinez, there's a cool church here. Was it Kras Mazur that said, Religion is parolidon for the masses. He may have been a communard, but we're in agreement about that. Still, I imagine the architecture is quite lovely. Dude, they got a speed lab set up inside the church. Also, there's a void where nothing exists. It's amazing. It's pretty cool. It's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. One of the downsides of being an extremely high net worth individual is that mobs of low net worth individuals are constantly banding together to ask for money. Yeah, we ain't down with that. We're trying to become a high net worth individual ourselves. So you travel from place to place via shipping container? Smart, no? It also provides a means to hide from all the targeted advertising we extremely high net worth individuals are constantly subjected to. I can't imagine how different the targeted advertisements for the billionaire class are. Luxury yachts. High fidelity portable radio systems, fail proof outdoor, and so on. It just gets a bit middle class after a while. A bit bourgeois. Yeah. Huh. Oh, the bourgeois. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, that does sound pretty tiresome. Don't get me wrong. They're nice things, but once you achieve a certain level of wealth, your time and mental space become much more important than material goods. Fair enough, and that's why you live in a container. Why not? He speaks from the heart. He has very different problems compared to low net worth individuals such as yourself. For example, no problems at all. Not bad. Cool. Now that we sorted that out, let me ask you something Go else. Right ahead. So, have you considered... We'll not do this one. We're not going to ask for money. Have you considered breaking into the local art market? There it is. I knew it as soon as you did the Milton 328 knock. A fellow entrepreneur. Hell yeah. The art market, you say? Sure, hit me with it. As they say, I'm keen to hear what you have in mind. I've recently discovered a local painter with enormous potential. A painter? <sighs> I'm always looking to expand into new asset classes. Who's the artist? Dude, it's Cindy the Skull. You know who it is. Aha. And the name of the piece? Uh, what was the name she gave it? It wasn't Gross Prophet. Was it this one? Morph Sir Toil? There's no sign of a reaction for a good three seconds. Then. Wonderful things, aren't they? Names. They can completely change your reading of a person, or in this case, a painting. Yeah, 
for sure. Before I invest, I need to know more about the work. How do I know this asset is going to appreciate with time? This is the only question that matters. Fail to come up with an interesting hook, and he's out. The comfortably wealthy want their views challenged when making a purchase. Don't hold back. It's an early entry into an emerging style known as Art Issue. No, no, no. Not really, really struggling. Um, Comfortably wealthy. Value is something you should discover for yourself. What do you see? It's actually just a mixing palette. <laughs> um... I like this one. She was definitely... This is like what Cindy the Skull was saying. Emerging? That's a word with plenty of appeal. What is it that defines this style exactly? Just tell him the truth. Why does no one ever want to tell the truth? Now is the time to champion the power of the sinuses. Art plus issue... No, no, no. Yeah, it's art that is produced by a way of sneezing. Hmm. Seems unhygienic. Is that what's in these days? But perhaps I judged too quickly. Is there an intelligent reasoning behind the method? Yeah. The artness sense enters a state of no-mindedness and lets the body take over. Hell yes, this would be what would appeal to him. So it's an extra somatic painting, an effort carried out by physical instinct, not the mind. Perhaps I have been neglecting the triumphs of anatomical perspicacity lately. He ate that right up. Pretty sure you've done it. We've done it, Savvy. We've done it. Well, I think that settles it. You found a buyer, my friend. A pleasure transacting with you. However, there are a few complications. I don't have the cash on me right now to pay for art of this caliber. What I can instead offer are shares in Mauer Koshlai Mercury Group. Shares? That's even better. You can do a lot with them if you play your cards right. Um, interesting. This seems... I don't know, is this like a company that's going to go out of business? What are these shares worth? I bought these shares many years ago for a steal. As predicted, Mauer Koshley Mercury's operating profit has increased year on year, and there is no signs of it slowing down. People always need Mercury. Which means you could net yourself a considerable profit if you need some immediate liquidity. But if you don't mind waiting, I expect the value of these shares to double within the next five years. Yeah, but how much are they worth right now? Seems like a clever investment. Yes, uh -huh. but chances are you can't use them to buy anything right now. No cigarettes, no alcohol, no funky little colorful pills. Right, well, what is the Mauer? It's Mauer a Gottwaldian Ilmaran yeah. company that specializes in extracting mercury. It's seen massive growth lately due to the discovery of Riotvark mercury. Have you heard about it? At the moment, it's trading at more than 1.5 times the price of gold. That's because it's an essential component in the next generation of radio computers. It's not bad. Frames using it in their next model. I can't wait for mine to turn up. My predictions say it's improved speed and thus metal range should increase my trade efficiency by whopping 46%. You really should order one if you don't want to be left behind. A step forward for technology, yes, but only for those who can afford it. All right, my man. I think we have a deal. Splendid. A roll of paper emerges from the radiance. Is this the shares? This is a stock certificate. Well, a photocopy of one. Nevertheless, it's solid proof that you own shares in Mauer Costley Mercury Group. Right. The light around the individual in front of you changes somehow as you take the scroll. You can't figure out what's different. You just know 
that it is. This transaction has changed the physical relationship between you. You are now more alike somehow. Wait, do we increase our net worth? Has the Wies Weissman coefficient changed? The Weiss Weissman coefficient for you and this individual has now dropped to 0.9989. Repeating. Whoa, we just like became like a millionaire. My goodness. That concludes our part of the transaction. Once you've turned over the asset, my people will get the legal ball rolling. Another deal complete. Welcome to the big leagues. If you haven't already, I'd advise you to consider hiring a personal brand strategist. Yeah, what do they do? What don't they do? Oh, they practically do everything from spotting good investments and analyzing design trends to booking a lunch timetable at the prestigious Landrusé. So could you hook me up with one? Unfortunately not. I only know the ones who work with multi-millionaires and beyond. But take a look around and I'm sure you'll find one. Personal brand strategies are attracted to money like sharks to blood. You'll find having net worth opens many new doors for you. Wow. Idiot doom spiral? We're gonna have them become, oh, oh, if he knows any personal brand strategists, okay. Oh, Fair and enough. we should see what this net worth can do. Might score a discount, or better yet, get you some free goods. That's the kind of thing that really makes you feel like a hotshot. Ask the local merchants about it if you get the chance. So, what's next on the agenda? All right, thank you, Why good go sir. Why so soon? I feel we've so much more to talk about. Ah, well, until next time. What an amazing and interesting and very surreal interaction we just had. We sold an art piece for some stock shares in a Mercury company, which apparently, I mean, if our coefficient was 0.9998 repeating, and it went up to 0.9989, like, that's what? That's a factor of almost 10? So we, like, increased our net worth by 10 to, oh my god. have a net worth meter right here our net worth has gone from 83 to 232 thousand we're freaking rich I think we're rich photocopied stock certificate I don't know how valuable a photocopy of a stock certificate really is now that you think of it the pearlescent paper adamantly resists being held open it demands struggle at both ends. The print inside is just as taxing, due to its fine and curlicue font. The most attractive part is the image emblazoned across the top. Feisty little thing. But don't worry, it's under control. We don't even know what it says. We'll look at the top of the document. Inside an oval frame is a grey sketch of a curly-haired girl enthusiastically riding an industrial drill. It's churning up hard chunks of rocky ground and scattering them into the air. In the hole created beneath is a silvery river of liquid metal. Her form is terrible. She needs to straighten her back and increase the downward pressure on that machine. Has no one taught her about ergonomics? Oh, physical instrument. I don't think she's actually physically doing it. It's supposed to be artistic. We'll attempt to read the words. Each letter is shaped like a laugh line, being pulled in a million different directions. They're all grinning at you, pleased with practically being indecipherable. Wow. All right. Can we see anything? Your vision blurs into a haze of dark scribbles. It's like looking at a wrought iron fence through a greasy lens. Not a single recognizable symbol appears to you. A bold black mesh curves around the oval image at the top of the document. It almost looks as if it were penned with intention. Perhaps it was. You're starting to think it might actually say something. If it does, it remains hidden from you. All you see is a baffling enigma 
a coiled nest of viper letters, if they even are letters. There must be some sort of logic there. We are having some the trouble with it. The threatens to coil back into itself as you relax a little. Let's put it away. All right, I mean, we're, we're freaking rich. We're freaking rich. We're going to get ourselves a personal brand strategist. Dude, Kim, you thought we were solving a murder? Nah, man, we're solving how to become part of the freaking 1%. Nah, 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 we ain't stopping even at the 1%. We're going point zero one percent we're going up all the way to the top look at look at our look how puny that 83 real is yeah i mean sure we don't have any cash but we got a stock certificate baby oh yeah let's just hold on to this i mean if it's gonna double in five years why not although electrochemistry was right we can't turn this thing into drugs or maybe we can Stop looking at Frit. Although maybe we can get some free stuff from Frit. I don't think she's going to give us free stuff. But yeah, this, that's a good stopping point. We managed to sell our art. We managed to find the Insulindian Phasmid. I mean, not really. We kind of, yeah, kind of made Lena sad. We didn't even manage to f tell her that her marriage wasn't a sham, that it was real. We're like, no, it's a, it's a... You know, just built on a foundation of lies. It'll be fine. That's how the best relationships are. Just lies. All lies. This guy saying welcome to Revishal. We'll just ignore him. Put him... Oh, no, but not that guy. Oh, we don't want to stand next to any of these guys. You know what? Let's just go inside the print. But, yeah. That'll do it for this episode. I hope you had a good time. It was strange. It was weird. But now we're rich. Maybe. Kind of. I mean, it's a foot... I mean, he didn't even sign over the stock certificate. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's all good. I'm sure it's worth a lot. You know, let's just let's just quickly ask. We'll quickly ask. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. What kind of discounts can a man with net worth get? In here? Um, that's teen speak for no, no discounts. Excuse us. My partner here, of course, knows that net worth is not legal tender. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Well, that'll do it for this episode. Hopefully we can turn this net worth into actual wealth at one point. But until then, I do hope that you remember to take care of yourself and keep it disco, baby.